So new type of video for these triple triad videos, which is, you know, I've talked about this before, but the thing I think I regret most about triple triad advance is that we never kept track of the tournament games. You know, there's not this record of games to go through and look at and find all these great moves or find where people made mistakes and see what different kind of ideas people had and see if the structures people aimed for changed over time. It would be fascinating to be able to compare directly different eras rather than just have the results, but look at what was figured out over time or what was lost over time. And I really wish we had this and really like looking at, you know, great moves. And so I just want to, I've, you know, been looking at games, been looking at triple triad stuff, and there's some moves uh, around what I've been looking at that seem really cool to me. And I just wanted to share those and have positions for people to solve, but that just weren't just puzzles, but kind of celebrating the creativeness that's possible in this game. So this hand is from a Piggy Man article. Um, he built the hand on the left. Uh, which you probably could have guessed if I'd asked you, which of these two hands did Piggy Man build? It's, it's the strange one. And there's a lot of sort of little strange synergies that might not be intuitively obvious. There are a bunch of sevens down, and the 6375 plays off that, as does the 7847. And, you know, things like that where just, like, the 9374 is a 9-up. There's a card that plus walls that, right? Um, the 6375 is a 5 to the left. There's a, there's a same wall there where everything is something it plays off of, but it's not anything so obvious or direct as having, you know, paired cards where they're exact opposites, or having a lot of cards with the same number combinations. So it's a very strange hand. I'm not going to claim it's a good hand. I think it is a very um, synergistic and strange ways hand, a creative hand, and one that has a surprising amount of power. But of course, it is using weaker cards, I'm not going to, you know, claim that this is a top-tier hand, because it isn't. You can just use more powerful cards, and you will play more powerful hands. But that, of course, isn't what Piggy was going for. He was trying to show, you know, the strange and wonderful. So, um, yeah, um, we're going to see some cool synergies. It's intended starter usually is 3, 9, 7, 9, and 5, but he also talks about how 3, 9, 7, 9, and 1 can be a starter, and there's a bunch of different ways to play it. Uh, we're going to skip to move 3. Um, so Vincent in two, I think, uh, I guess not completely skip. I think this is a logical move. Uh, red has plus walls in both one and three, and blue only has the plus wall in three. So, you know, it looks um, like a good move, because generally if you have more combo squares than your opponent, that's going to favor you. Uh, I think this is actually a very poor move, and uh, we're going to get to why at the end. Though I guess I won't offer what a better move would be, so not very useful perhaps, but... Um, but this is the opponent's response in this game Piggy showed, and he goes Tika in 9, and here he comments, and I'm just going to read what he commented because I think it's a useful analysis. I already read this in the Piggy Man article, but here we're going to do a different deep dive into the position. Uh, here the opponent played Vincent in 2 to take King Behemoth. By playing Tika in 9, we ensure that we can take back King Behemoth with more than one card. This is a vital part of this hand. It's important to be able to lose and take back King Behemoth at any point during the game. This is why Corsair Scholar, which is the 7847, is important to hold on to in this game, since we've already played Tika in 9, meaning the only way to combo back King Behemoth in 4 is with Corsair Scholar. Now that may sound strange, because why would Tika have combos on King Behemoth from 4? But that is because if any of the cards is played in one that has a 7 down, Tika would be set up there. And so Tika is a card that often, with the types of setups this hand uses, um, Tika being 756A, is a card that potentially has combos in 4. Here it won't have those combos, so he's saying it's even import more important than usual to hold on to the 7847. At this point, if the opponent tries to play anything in 6 or 8, it will be safely comboed back. The only exception here is Curious in 6, which can be met with Corsair Scholar in 8. If they attempt to play in 7 afterward to take Corsair Scholar, playing Sphinx in 4 will mean uh, Sphinx, I think, is what the 6375 card used to be, but at the end of the site, that was no longer what the 6375 card was, so I think he means that card. Um... Playing Sphinx in 4 will mean that Samurai Ranger will be able to combo Vincent back on both sides, um, because Samurai Ranger is the 9374, it already has the combo in 3, and if the 6375 ever goes in 4, it will also have the combo in 1. And thus nailing the victory. Taking a, a step back, what if the opponent instead elected to play in 1 or 3? 
A move in 1 can be matched with a move in 8, thus creating a very handy Z formation, and anything in 3 will be taken by Samurai Ranger and will be unable to be taken back by the opponent. Samurai Ranger again being the 9374. So this is a good analysis. I just want to go a little deeper into the position here um, and explore specifically what happens if they play Kiros in 6. And if you paid attention and remember what I just read you 15 seconds ago, this was a move he mentioned a response to. We're actually going to find an even better response than the one he did. So uh, the first question is, blue has one tie. Can you find it? Or even better, can you find blue's win? And the move Piggy said was a tie, but we actually have a winning plan against this move. And I'm going to pause, and if you want to pause the video, you can pause the video to find it, because I think this is a, a pretty cool position, and five moves left tends to be at the, um, the edge of kind of high-level calculation for players. Um, but this is, this is a tricky one and a pretty neat solve, so... Uh, I would, you know, if I were you, I would take a few minutes to try to solve it, but I can also just jump to the explanation because I think it's a pretty cool move. So I'm going to go to our solution now. Boom! Six, three, seven, five, and 4, which already came up, right? Because now we know that 9, 3, 7, 4 has the combo in both 1 and 3. And this starts to get to, and we'll touch on this again, why Vincent in 2 was a mistake is because red doesn't really have safe cards they can slide along next to it, especially once they've played Kiros. They have nothing they can put in one that won't be comboed. So now anything they put er, in three. So anything they put in three, we have the combo in one, and we just win. Anything they put in one, we have the combo in three, and we just win. And 7847 seven is really good in the remaining squares in seven and eight. So any move in seven or eight is met by 7847 seven in the other square, and you'll notice those sevens down we talked about at the very start play really well with 7847. And this is just a winning position. We've sort of segmented the board into two parts, where each of our card has one part where it's really good. And as soon as the opponent plays in that part of the board, we make our strong move also in one of those paired squares. And if they play in the other part, well, we use our card for the other part. And uh, I hope someone found it. I think this is a really cool move. And... Um, makes a lot of sense. The other move um, that ties is the one Piggy mentioned, 7, 8, 4, 7, and 8. And if we go back and look at this position, 7, 8, 4, 7, and 8, um, it ties up the game 5-5. Five, five. Um, it does surrender the 3 square, and that looks really dangerous because they can go in 3, and then the card in 2 is secure. And we only have one tying idea there, but our tie is the same move. Our tie is the 6, 3, 7, 5, and 4 move because it sets us up to have the plus in 1. And we need to be able to threaten uh, to do something in 1 to attack Vincent in 2, or we're just going to lose there. So Piggy's move, 7, 8, 4, 7, and 8, is the only tie in this position and is the second best move in the position. But it connects, right? And I think there's this cool feature of moves you find in one line often apply in others. And so maybe you found 7, 8, 4, 7 in 8, and you thought, oh, that looks dangerous if they go in 3. No, wait, I do have a tie. I can play 6, 3, 7, 5, and 4 and get the tie. But then never do that next step of, what if I just play 6, 3, 7, 5, and 4 immediately? And I think there's this cool way that moves you find down the road you can often play really early, and a lot of the kind of fascinating position moves that really strong players play, that if you look at the position for a second, just seem strange and mysterious and not at all obvious, are because they found a move because they kept calculating lines, and this move kept coming up as useful. And those lines didn't quite work, but what if they just make this move first, and it's in a strange square, it doesn't connect to what's going on, but they knew that at some point this move would be really valuable, and maybe it segments and pairs squares in a useful way immediately. And I think that's how a lot of, at least for me, um, kind of mysterious moves are found, is something just keeps coming up as I calculate the more obvious moves, and that brings me to an idea for something a little stranger and more creative. So um, even the tie relies on finding this move in four. So six, three, seven, five, and four is our winning idea. Um, well, we go to the next slide. It's freezing up. There we go. Um, and so I did mention that um, I think 756A and 9, or I think I mentioned, maybe I didn't, is um, actually not the most precise way to punish Vincent. And red has a path to tie. And uh, pause again if you want to find it. This one's not as interesting a solution, but um, worth looking at for a moment. 
Um, you may remember Piggy explained why each move had problems, so you basically have to find a way to look one move past what he noticed to find a tie for red. And our solution is we got to go in one. Um, we really don't have a good shot if we don't go in one. We have to block one of one of blue's big combo squares. And blue doesn't current. Sorry, we have to go in three. Sorry, it says going in one blocking blue's big combo square. Huge error. I meant three. We have to go in three. Blue is the big threat in three. They don't have a threat right now in one. If we've already blocked three, they don't have time to go in four because we can then block one, right? So if we go three, the danger is, of course, if they just go six and capture us. But here, even though that surrenders cards, right, if we say go uh, three, eight, nine, eight, and three, right? They can same us in six with nine, three, seven, four. And uh, blue is going to have secured a bunch of cards over there. But a uh, cyan and eight there is good enough to tie, um, as is something like Nanaki, six, nine, seven, seven in one, just because at that point it's seven down will already be safe. And that, if you check the lines, will be enough to tie there. Um, but we can just about sneak a tie, but we have to block the square. And so the move I talked about is 3, 8, 9, 8, and 3 is a way to block it. But other cards there work too. Like if you play Nanaki there, I believe that's a tie as well. I think the key here is understanding 3 is a square that we just can't give blue access to if we're the red player here. And any move anywhere else, blue can start setting up against 1, and we, we don't have anything. Or can set up to... Sorry. Blue can set up for something in 1, and then we'll never be able to go in 3, um, and we should take three as quick as we can. Um, I'm saying this poorly, but hopefully that made some sense. And there are multiple cards in three that work here. Kept confusing three and one in my head. I'm sorry. But uh, I think the idea of they have a huge combo square, you know, it's going to plus wall Vincent, which has a very high outfacing values, and that's going to flip Behemoth, which has high outfacing values, and that's going to be just too powerful a combo down the road. We cannot leave it alone. Red has to start blocking access squares. And three is the one to do it, and three can tie. Which brings us to puzzle number three. Blue to move and win. So Piggy brought the idea of 7, 5, 6, A, and 9, which I think is a really good move. I think like it's very hard for uh, Red to get out of. Red has to find, I have to block three, trying to do anything else, looking for safety, you know, playing something like Kuros in eight or something, looking for strong outfacing isn't going to be good enough. There's going to be too much combo potential out there. Um, so going in nine puts a lot of pressure on the red player. But now we actually have a better move. And can you find it? And if you want to pause and think, and I'm going to go to the solution, which is, once again, 6, 3, 7, 5, and 4. And the whole key is just setting up 1 and 3 as these paired squares. And now 9, 3, 7, 4 dominates both 1 and 3. This is, this is an awesome move. Um, and it's, it's a win by force. And if you look at it, any move red makes in 1, blue just goes in 3 and combos everything and is just completely winning. If red now tries to block three, tries to say, okay, I can't leave the three square open, well, the one square is open, and we have the combo in one now with nine, three, seven, four, and that's going to be winning two. And so what if red goes somewhere else? What if red says, okay, I'll play in seven? Well, blue wants to leave one and three open, and they have one card for both those squares. So they're only occupying either of one and three as soon as red goes in the other. So blue's going to have to look at other squares, and the perfect move to meet anything in seven is seven, five, six, a, and eight, just capturing whatever's put in seven and leaving those one and three squares open. And at some point at the end, blue's just gonna combo everything. So I, I think this is a sweet move um, and just shows, looking at this, just how critical that four square was and setting up the pairs squares in one and three. And this really gets to why I think Vincent in two is a bad move because it's very high outfacing numbers that it looked like red had better control of, but because blue could control both sides of it with the same card, and because it was so hard for red to play safely next to it, you know, they had no A facing right to be able to safely go in one, and they only had one card with a nine or higher facing left to safely go in three, they were just setting themselves up for huge combo trouble. And six, three, seven, five, and four, whether it be immediately or whether it be in lots of lines we calculated down the road, is just going to be a devastating reply. 
and I think really speaks to the how neatly kind of pigs set up this hand that this kind of move is possible here because there are lots of hands you might look at where you're just you're not going to see moves like this because the hand doesn't justify them the hand doesn't equip itself to be able to do them and so I think this speaks to how cool pig's hand is but it also speaks to this move that kept coming up in lines. From the very first pig's analysis I read, he pointed out that Sphinx, but uh, you know now we have a different picture, that 6, 3, 7, 5, and 4 was going to be a critical move to set up 9, 3, 7, 4. And it kept, keeps coming up even when it looks like it has nothing to do with the current structure. Like here, you know, by far the least common squares to go in are going to be 4 and 6. Uh, but 4 is just a win. And so, anyways, hope you enjoyed seeing... Uh, what I think is a really spectacular set of triple triad moves. I'm going to try to make more of these videos with uh, positions I think are neat and surprising. Um, they won't necessarily teach good fundamentals because these are not the squares you standardly go in, but they show that you can often reach creative ideas by having first looked at the normal moves and seeing what they did or didn't accomplish and seeing follow-ups down the road in those lines.